Hi, I'm Heather with Going Batty, and today I am going to show you how to uh, can our uh, our sweet potato squash that we we've got. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So I've had several requests for from people that uh, that they're asking me to show them how I can this so that we can use it. Now I'm going to give credit where credit is due. I didn't know how to do this. So we got the seeds from American Homestead. So I looked up a video of theirs where Jamie canned her sweet potato squash. And so I learned from her. So if you want go to their channel, you can check out her doing it. But I am going to do mine almost the exact same way that she does hers. All right, so I have my cutting board out, my knife. I've got two bowls. One is gonna be for the squash and one's gonna be for the peels and seeds and all that stuff because it's gonna go in our compost pile. And um, from what I understand, you can use the same method on pumpkin if you're gonna do pumpkin. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this, peel it, de-seed it, um, cut it up into about one inch cubes, and I'm gonna throw it in this bowl for right now. All right, so now I've got everything peeled and diced up and um, I've got my clean jars and my, um, my lids right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dry pack this into these jars. Now, um, I've read in some recipes where they have blanched it for two minutes first, but this is gonna be in a pressure canner for 90 minutes. I think it's gonna be pretty well cooked. Um, Jamie, she, she dry packed hers, so I'm just gonna do mine the same way that she did hers. All right, so we're gonna put um, some water in here and we're gonna leave about, a, I guess it's an inch of head space. So about to this bottom ring here is where you wanna fill the water up to. So just around there, just to, so that it's kind of covered. We are now gonna take and kind of run a clean knife kind of down in here and try to release all of the air pockets that are in here. And you may have to push some of your some of your squash back down in, but just try. And then the other thing that you can do that I found, like if you tap the jar on the counter, a lot of those air bubbles will come up to the top. And then the ones that you can see, you can just release. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a clean paper towel and I'm gonna clean off all of the rims of these jars. And while you're doing that, make sure like you're checking, run your finger along it, make sure there's no chips that you missed because if it has any kind of imperfection in that rim, it won't seal right. If it has any kind of liquid or if it has any kind of the, just the squash on it, it won't seal, seal right. So um, you're gonna to want to do that. And then you're gonna take your little lids and I have mine in some um, hot water here and you're going to want to put those on top of your jars just like that all right now we're going to take our rings and we're going to put them on our jars and you're just going to get them to where they're they're finger tight you don't want them super duper tight but just finger tight just like that and you want to check your rings too. Make sure there's no rust on them or anything like that because that might hinder them sealing properly. Or if they're bent. If they're bent, they won't seal properly either. So I always check my rings. All right, so we're over at our pressure canner now. And I have had this kind of on simmer. I don't, because the, the water that I put in my jars was hot, I don't want to put cold jars or hot jars into cold liquid. Um, that will crack your jars. So I've had it kind of on a simmer so that the water is warm. And the one thing that I do, and um, I, I learned this from my grandmother, is you put a little bit of vinegar in your water to keep it from clouding the outside of your jar so that you don't get this weird like mineral film on the outside of your jars. So we're gonna do that and then we're gonna place our canning jars into this. We're gonna pressure can them. Um, where I live, um, you have to, pressure canning is different wherever you live because it depends on where you are above sea level. We're about 740 feet 
above sea level here in Ohio. So I have to can mine at 11 pounds of pressure for 90 minutes. All right, so there you are. That is our uh, sweet potato squash. Um, as you can tell, there was a little bit of liquid loss, but that's normal um, when you when you can in a pressure canner. Um, so you'll see that and maybe sometimes even a little bit more. But we're gonna go ahead and put this in with its little friends here. And if you can see here, guys, this is my food that I have canned this year. So except for the, the sauerkraut here and the olives and the, um, and the um, shoot, what are those things called? Artichokes. But uh, we have great northern beans, we have our sweet potato squash, we have pinto beans, chicken stock, tomato sauce, apple butter, strawberry preserves, and then uh, the uh, jalapenos and the salsa were given to us by a neighbor. And I'm actually gonna be adding in here um, some beef stock too. I've got some of that in my refrigerator and it's gonna be the next thing that I pressure can after I'm I got done with um, this. So I'm gonna be putting those in jars and putting that in the pressure canner next. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe. Um, go check out American Homestead if you have not. They have some really great videos there. They do everything almost completely off grid and they're a great channel. Um, I believe that's it. Any questions, like I said, leave them in the comments below and more updates as we go. Bye.